Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Happy new month of June, six months down already y'all. I hope you keep your head high and keep going at this game because definitely it's going to blow up someday. So keep going, don't give up. Happy new month once more. By the way, I'm not so sure if this month is starting on a happy note for Didi because it seemed like his past won't just leave him alone. Diddy's former makeup artist from Bad Boys Record says she heard him badly up Cassie, leaving her with a lots of knots on her head and a black eye. You guys, this horror is not ending anytime soon for Diddy. And you guys, the unscripted scene of Portia Williams and Simon Gobadia seem to be never ending at this point. It's giving, take us out of this group chat because this story is not ending. Simon Gobadia publicly apologizes to his clan, his Gobadia family for embarrassing them in his poor choice in picking a wife. All of this in this video, but before we get right into it, hey kings and queens, welcome back to the channel to go royalty. Back with another celebrity relationship gist. To our returning subscribers, you guys are the re MVP. And if you're new, you're so welcome. Please consider being a part of us by hitting the subscribe button and turn on the post notification bell to not miss another video. Thank you. In a recent interview with CNN that dropped on the very first day of this month of June, another of Sean Diddy Combs past is facing him again. A former employee is picking up, kind of collaborating everything that Cassis court document stated. Miss Myla Morale, a former makeup artist for the Bad Boy founder, came forward about allegedly witnessing his vow and saying she heard him beat up Cassie Ventura so badly it left her with knots and a black eye. After reportedly living in fear of accusing such a powerful man, Morales is speaking out about the alleged 2010 assault. In an interview with CNN, she recalled a horrific incident similar to the brutal 2016 assault of Cassie captured on the hotel surveillance footage that we all saw. And she said, I have kept the secret for like 14 years. They went into the bedroom, shut the door, and all I could hear was screaming and yelling. Whatever was going on in there, I don't know. But all I could think of was to grab Cassie's things and start packing it up and just getting her out to safety and bring her to my house. This first time I experienced it was 2010, and um, I was in the hotel room when Puff broke, you know, came in and I had no idea Cassie left. And when I woke up, I just saw his, his, his presence come into the room. They went into the bedroom and shut the door and all I could hear is screaming and yelling and whatever was going on in there, I don't know. But all I could think of was um, to grab Cassie's things and start packing it up and just getting her out to safety and bringing her to my house. So that's kind of like what transpired from that night. And once she uh, came out of the room, she was badly, you know, beaten. Oh my God! What did what did her physical appearance look like? I mean, it was it, knots on her knots on her head, black eye, busted lip, um, but a lot of knots all over her head. Did she go to the police at that point or anything? No, no, we didn't know what to do at that point because you know Puff, Puffy is a very powerful person, and we were quite terrified. So we, I just you know brought her to my house, and my friend who is a doctor, I called her. And she was, thank God she was in town because we didn't know what to do. And she treated her for, you know, just to make sure she didn't have any, a concussion or, or anything like that. But it was, it was really, it was painful to, to see Cassie like that because she's such a, you know, a, a beautiful human being. And when the interviewer asked her about how she felt seeing the surveillance video, she said, it was like, I actually witnessed what could have happened in that room and more. That was a hallway incident. Who knows what could have happened in that room when I was outside of there. I was devastated. I've actually been devastated since the court cases came out about how he mistreated Cassie, she said. Myla Morales, who is also now a friend of Cassie, claims she has known Cassie before all of this. She has known Cassie as a teenager, and I definitely know she felt this the most, seeing how Cassie has been abused all along, and she and Cassie felt weak, you know, to be able to report such a powerful man as Puff, but I guess nature is doing its thing, camera is doing its thing right now on him. But all of this again, they're all alleged, even though we saw, even though we saw 
what happened at the hotel hallway. But then again, you guys, what do y'all think about what Mira Moraz had to say about her experience? with Cassie and Didi hearing them from the bedroom and you guys that must have been devastating with the way she described it the knots on her head the bruises the black eye like oh huh? I can't just I can't just phantom because how can a man put his hands on a woman so that extent of leaving her with a black eye is definitely some inner demon he must be fighting with in one of Myla Morales post where caption she says I love you my baby sis at Cassie I will always be your sister for life you monster we know who you are and now we all can tell she was referring to Diddy I don't know if this Diddy nightmare is gonna end anytime soon before Miss Myla Morales interview we also saw Diddy pharma security you know spilling these even talking about Diddy abusing rest her soul Kim Potter in the vehicle in LA like Cassie and Kim Potter only God knows how many more of this alleged abuse there is but you guys what are your thoughts on what the former makeup artist had to say about her experience with Didi and Cassie I don't want to believe at this point there's still someone who still thinks that all of this is just a wrongful accusation towards Didi because hey the cameras at this point they don't lie and the man even agreed and apologized for that one yes maybe there will be some that may not be true but how are we gonna know how are we gonna tell you guys share your thoughts about that in the comment section and now these two simon gobadia and Portia williams they are giving real drama even before the real housewife season 16 will premiere they are giving us off screen real drama in the previous video I shared with you guys, you all can see the jabs and shading going on between Simon and Portia Williams. Portia giving him back to back, always putting his immigration situation in his face. And also Simon Gubadia just trolling her. First of all, he started with a Rolls Royce to kind of calling his ex-wife a pig in a lipstick. You guys, this too. <laughs> I don't know y'all, but right now Simon Gubadier is making a public apology to his family. In his post he says, my life is not a storyline, my life is a story of perseverance. And then he captioned it saying, the Gubadier family has always been a prideful family probably one of the largest families in Nigeria. Our name is literally tied to one single family, meaning most people with the last name Gubadia are related. So when one of your family members is reduced to a storyline, thousands of family members are also affected by the narrative created and meant to destroy. I want to publicly acknowledge and apologize to my family, the Gubadias, for the pain my poor judgment may have caused and brought upon our family name. I am so sorry. I beg for your forgiveness. You guys. Oh my god. Well, first of all, not Simon Gubadia saying the Gubadia family name is literally one of the largest families in Nigeria. I don't know. I am from Nigeria, but I have never heard that name Gubadia. I, I don't think I have. Or maybe I have. I don't think I have. Even so large, I should have. But well, he, maybe he should stay in the Edo Kingdom and that would make more sense. But saying the largest family in Nigeria, I don't know. If you are a Nigerian and you know of that family, please leave it in the comment section because y'all, I do not know of the Gubadia family. There are major names even in the Edo Kingdom, you know, large family names that are very known the Arbor of Benin, the Asamo of Benin Kingdom, but that one, anyway, let me not bore you all with that. <laughs> but Simon publicly apologizing to his family and also throwing shades, meaning marrying Portia Williams was a mistake and it was a poor judgment on his part. He also went on to put Portia on blast for the misogynistic and often homophobic undertones of calling a man sassy. In his post it says, to comfortably call a man sassy is to imply women are weak and emotional. 
that's not a good narrative for a community. Let's do better. And he captioned it saying, I love and respect black women. I would never imply that they are less than men. Let's do better. And of course, Portia Williams, as always, throws Simon about his questionable citizenship and criminal records. And you guys, Simon claps back that immigration issues are above Portia's intellectual weight class. Yikes. <laughs> so Portia claps back on her story where she said, Happy Wednesday. If a person concealed criminal past and provided fake identification for a green card, is it still a valid green card in the U.S.? Hashtag inquiring minds. And of course, Simon Gobadia claps back saying, I'm gonna need people who think there are 265 days in a year. Stay out of understanding complex U.S. immigration laws above your mediocre mind. And then he captioned saying, of course, what I'm thinking, only a housewife trying to pull the check of a real housewife. Aish. I don't know. Someone is getting better at the game that Portia taught him. Because, yo, what do y'all think about this clap back? Honestly, it's giving messy between these two. It's giving major drama. The drama that Fox is supposed to see on the show, they're giving us already off the show. This online drama between these two has been going on for too long. I have lost count of the number of episodes we are at with Portia Williams and Simon Gubadia. I just wish they would stop, have their divorce in peace, and just move on. Simon, yes, okay, poor judgment on your part. You made a mistake. Can you move on? Apparently, Faleen was a poor judgment, now Portia, and who knows, maybe his other baby mamas. Yeah, you're always right, and the women are always wrong. And Portia, on the other hand, immigration, criminal record, girl, you knew all of this. You can't tell me you've been flying around with that man going to Dubai and every other place you guys have been to, and you didn't know he had just his green card. Like, girl, please, please, just try to get your slots on the real housewife show and make sure it's intact make sure simon don't ruin it for you and just go about your bag girl because it just just leaves this whole immigration issue and whatever because a lot of folks are not buying into this but you guys that's it on this video simon Diddy's posture the ex makeup artist from bad boys record you guys i don't know between dd Simon Gubadi and Portia who is having a good night's sleep because he's messy with this three right now. But you guys do your thoughts in the comment section. Y'all know I love to hear your thoughts.